historic uh, piece of legislation. Um, I know I was watching a little bit of cable news last night and most of the focus was on the $1,400 direct payments, the extension of the unemployment insurance, but I really thought it'd be helpful to drill down on some of the other parts of this package that are gonna be absolute game changers for New Mexico. And the first thing to know is that this is gonna supercharge the already uh, robust efforts of our governor and our state to, to vaccinate New Mexicans. Uh, nationwide, there's $20 billion in this plan uh, that will allow the Biden administration to improve distribution and administration and production of vaccines. And in, an, in addition, it includes very specific provisions to support vaccine delivery to our veterans, to the VA, and to our tribal communities, to the IHS. Um, we're also gonna greatly be able to expand testing, genomic sequencing of variants so that we can stay ahead of the variants and contact tracing efforts as well as manufacturing and procurement of PPE. So in a very real way, I believe that today is the beginning of the end for this pandemic. It's also pretty amazing to think that this piece of legislation is literally the single greatest investment in Indian country in American history. Uh, we have to reduce the stark and, and incredibly persistent inequities in transmission and hospitalization and death rates. And this makes real robust investments to do that. $31 billion nationwide for tribes. Uh, there will be well over a billion dollars flowing directly into the tribes in New Mexico. Uh, and this includes, in addition to the direct response to the virus, unprecedented levels of federal funding to increase access to clean water, electricity, broadband, the, the basics that we realized are so underserved uh, in too many tribal communities. Also, expanding the child tax credit is something that hasn't gotten quite as much uh, talk as I think it really deserves. And for New Mexico, it's enormous. Uh, we're looking at nearly every child in New Mexico, something like 95% will benefit by expanding the child tax credit. Uh, taking that credit from $2,000 to $3,600 per child and making those payments monthly. So if you think about that, if you have a single mother who's out of work, who's got a four-year-old daughter and an eight-year-old son, uh, right now she would receive no child tax credit at all. Under this legislation, she'd receive the full tax credit of 3,600 for her daughter and $3,000 for her son. That means $550 per month for the year. In addition, this legislation is gonna help us safely open our schools. Uh, we secured $1.2 billion for New Mexico K through 12 public schools to really address all of our needs to get those schools open, to do it in a way that, that is safe for our kids and safe for our educators. And 95% of that money is going directly to local school districts. Uh, on the ground for sick leave, for technology, for air filtration upgrades, for outdoor classrooms. So the last thing I'll just mention is, you know, restaurants we all know have been particularly hard hit by this pandemic. And we included uh, a proposal that was very bipartisan to do $25 billion nationally in direct grants that is focused at local businesses, not at chains, but at local restaurants. Uh, now, before I introduce Senator Lujan, I, I wanna leave you with something which is, please, New Mexico, file your taxes. Even if you think that you're not gonna owe anything, that's how the federal government is going to find you for these uh, programs. So this year, Whatever else you do, make sure that you file your taxes. Um, this plan, this American Rescue Plan, it's the beginning of the end for this pan pandemic. And it's the beginning of a return to something that's gonna feel a lot more like normal than what we've been living through for the last year. And with that, uh, I'm really proud to introduce my colleague, my friend, 
uh, Senator Lujan, who's going to take you through some other amazing aspects of this uh, historic investment. Well, thank you, Senator Heinrich, for the introduction and for your incredible work in passing the American Rescue Plan. There are so many important pieces of this package that uh, are here because of the work of our senior senator in New Mexico, Martin Heinrich. Tomorrow marks one year since New Mexico saw its first cases of COVID-19. And one year since New Mexico families saw their lives changed through no fault of their own. While we won't soon forget the trouble and tragedy of the last year, there is reason to be optimistic for the future. Vaccines are being deployed at a quickening rate to communities across the country. And New Mexico has become a national leader for vaccine administration with more than one in four New Mexicans having received at least their first dose of the vaccine. And that's a credit to our governor, Michelle Lujan Grisham. We must build on this momentum to get more vaccine shots in the arms of New Mexicans and relief dollars in their pockets. And that's exactly what the American Rescue Plan does. This comprehensive legislation, which is now on its way to President Biden's desk, is the biggest leap towards stopping the spread of COVID-19, reopening our workplaces, schools, and businesses. The American Rescue Plan makes strong investments in our hospitals, rural health clinics, and Indian health services. It includes billions of dollars for vaccines, testing, contact tracing, as well as resources to address health disparities in communities of color tribal communities and rural communities. The American Rescue Plan also mounts an aggressive response to the financial crisis by providing targeted relief like direct payments, enhanced unemployment benefits and nutrition assistance to our families and communities. I was also proud to work with Senators Warnock and Booker to secure USDA debt relief for black, Native American and Hispanic farmers and ranchers. This critical funding will allow hard hit farmers and ranchers of color who did not receive their fair share of relief under the last administration to pay off outstanding USDA farm loans, debts, and related taxes and help them respond to the economic impacts of this pandemic. And as the governor knows and Senator Heinrich and Congresswoman Teresa Ledger know, especially with the drought conditions they're facing, this is going to help so many families across New Mexico. This measure is a game changer for farmers and ranchers in New Mexico who have faced discrimination at the USDA because it also provides funding to root out systemic racism at the USDA. The American Rescue Plan also prioritizes issues that I championed as a member of the House, increasing access to broadband through strong investments and expanding E-rate, providing COVID-19 relief to local governments and improving the welfare of New Mexico's children. The American Rescue Plan builds on the FCC's E-rate program to bring distance learning tools to students who face a cruel homework gap. And it also supports investments in broadband deployment in areas that have been underserved by providers, namely rural and tribal communities. The American Rescue Plan provides relief for every small town, county, city, and village, not just to our biggest cities in America and in New Mexico. And as a member of the House, I introduced the Coronavirus Community Relief Act to provide re robust relief to local governments. Senator Heinrich introduced that in the Senate. Now it's part of this package and it will be signed into law. Support for smaller communities will help keep essential workers like police officers and firefighters at the payroll and ensure residents do not lose essential service, including service for our seniors and the most vulnerable New Mexicans. Finally, the American Rescue Plan addresses a major shortfall a past COVID relief legislation by ensuring children are not driven deeper into poverty. Senator Heinrich highlighted this, and it's important that more families across New Mexico learn about this important program. The expanded and fully refundable child tax credit will put more money in the pockets of families, and 95% of New Mexico's children will see a benefit. You know, Republicans would have you believe that this help is going to people who don't need it. And I'm so disappointed that none of our Republican colleagues in the House or in the Senate voted for it. Republican colleagues in the House and Senate would say that the only worthy cause for spending $1.9 trillion is a tax giveaway to the wealthiest Americans and corporations. The people of New Mexico disagree. And we look forward to seeing this critical legislation signed by President Biden. I'll now turn this over to our good friend and our colleague, 
Teresa Ledger Fernandez, who will share uh, her remarks with the important work she has done in just a few short months in the U.S. House of Representatives. Teresa? Thank you so much, Senator Lujan and Senator Heinrich for your work over in the Senate and getting the bill and turning it back over to us. What this bill represents is in many ways what we see government is working, right? The House, the Senate, the President are responding to the promise that we made to the American people to act boldly to rescue our country from the pandemic. And that's what we're doing. And so I wanted to talk about a few of those things that we are doing in delivering on that promise. You know, the pandemic's tentacles have infiltrated every single aspect of our daily lives. We know that, right? But the American Rescue Plan's brilliance is that it recognizes the complexity of the crisis and responds with help. In addition to the much needed funding for our frontline workers, our farmers that Senator Lujan talked to about and our schools, oh my goodness, the help that we are providing to our schools, especially our Title I schools, which you know serve New Mexico so well. This legislation provides New Mexico with nearly $2.5 billion to help our state, local and tribal governments climb out of this crisis. $2.5 billion for those small villages, those small towns. And you know what? I've talked to the mayors and the local officials and the tribal leaders and the families across my district, Republicans and Democrats, right? And I've asked them, what do you need? What do you need to address this crisis? And this plan, it answers their request for direct payments, for help to open their fairgrounds and their small businesses. They're ready to receive this lifeline and put it to use. Oh, the Hispano and Native American farmers are ready for the USDA funding. They need to sustain their farms. I'm especially proud of the provisions in the bill that will help our families and our children. We've talked about this, but we need to say it over and over again because it is so significant. New Mexico has one of the highest child poverty rates in the country. This bill will lift about 50% of these children who are living in poverty out of poverty. Currently, there are about 244,000 children in New Mexico who don't receive the full value of the child tax credit. With this bill's child tax credit provisions, we're putting those children first today. We also know that since the pandemic began, there have been increased reports of abuse of women and children. Well, this bill helps fund women shelters and refuge. Our women workers, right, our women workers and entrepreneurs have especially been hard hit. They've lost their jobs in the front line and they've also stayed home to care for their children and their parents. So the child care assistance funds will help women get back to work. The funds for our elderly centers, for our senior centers will help them so they know that they're, they're, you know, the grand, grandparents are being taken care of as well. And we know that when children are learning, then their parents are earning. So New Mexicans told us what they need. We listened. And today we delivered for all Americans, New Mexicans, you know, Coloradans, Californians, Dakotas, all Americans are going to benefit from this day uh, that we've done and the, the signing that we're going to have. And then the great thing is this government working together, the House, the Senate, the presidency, we're going to also have a marvelous governor or state governor working to make sure that these provisions get implemented and that this money flows. And with that, I have the pleasure of turning it over to Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham. Thank you for all the wonderful work you have done on behalf of New Mexicans during this crisis. You are uh, amazing. And I love the fact that, you know, you speak to the White House, you speak to Congress, and you speak to your New Mexicans. Congresswoman, that was a very generous introduction. And for those who are joining us in our uh, specific announcements about our collective work and pride in the rescue plan, uh, what should resonate is this is what a collective partnership looks like when a delegation is really clear that their obligation and their efforts ought to be directed at the people that they represent, not only in their state, but across the country. And quite literally, this is the biggest effort. When you talk about a lifeline in a rescue, certainly the pandemic 
uh, uh, makes clear that we need that. But this is a country that continues to have at-risk families grow into poverty. This is a country that in too many ways under the last administration, let too many working families slip precariously closer to poverty or just drop right in that big black hole. President Biden and Vice President Harris with the leadership of the Democrats in the House and the Senate quite literally declared war on poverty once and for all by creating universal benefits and lifelines and lifelong assistance. So that when we talk about dropping the poverty rates and we talk about attacking those inequalities, we're talking about 25% of New Mexico families immediately by virtue of your work and your votes will be lifted out of poverty in New Mexico. There are no words to describe the impact that has on a state that has long had extreme and persistent poverty. This is exactly the investment uh, that we have always deserved. And we need now more than ever. And it is a time for not only great celebration, but it is time to make sure that we clarify and we talk to the individuals and the families, the advice to file your tax return, to engage with your uh, local elected officials, with your legislators, with your delegation, with your governor. Um, we are surviving this pandemic. With the American Rescue Plan, we don't just survive or hang on by our fingernails. We have the opportunity to rebuild, to regain, to readjust, we have the ability to go back to work. We can lift women out of poverty. Women were hit hardest, women own businesses. There isn't a single sector of New Mexico's economy. There's not a single working family in New Mexico who isn't gonna benefit by these efforts. And then as a governor, I'm really honored to be able to thank this delegation for making sure that we have the tools and resources to make sure that this is the safest state in the country in our response to the pandemic and any other public health risks or issues that might come our way ever again. And the last thing, these broadband investments and the direct investments to schools and to tribal nations with the investments that we're gonna get out of the legislature this session, this may be the best, frankly, the only opportunity to connect all of New Mexico once and for all and to have a robust investment in broadband and that makes us competitive economically and in education and in healthcare um, with all of our uh, bordering states and the nation and the globe. And New Mexico deserves every opportunity to be that competitive. So there's nothing more I can add except that this is a day of incredible recognition and celebration. This is the best leadership out of a presidential administration making clear that the American families and American citizens come first, that we will leave no stone and no investment unturned to make sure that you get a fair deal, hand up and out. And the Mexicans are going to thrive because of your hard work today. And so this is, uh, this is a day we're gonna have to celebrate instead of a day that would have been, you know, the pandemic annual effort an event every year. This is a day where we can say we attacked poverty at its root and we supported New Mexico families. And this is our best effort at making that a reality. Thank you to Congress and thank you to the Biden administration for your leadership and your courage. And with that, I'm gonna give the floor back uh, to our junior Senator, Senator Ben Ray Lujan. And before I turn it back over to Senator Heinrich, Representative Deb Holland could not be on the call today uh, but she knows personally the struggles New Mexico families face. She sent a statement sharing stories from New Mexicans she talked with and highlighting important investments in vaccines for every community in our state. And I'll read that aloud for you. This is from Congresswoman Deb Holland. The global pandemic has taken a heavy toll on families and communities in New Mexico and the country and disparities that already existed only got worse. As someone who lived in poverty and didn't have a savings for most of my adult life, I know what it's like to be one emergency away from being homeless. I spoke with families in my district whose work hours were cut dramatically, and they are struggling to make ends meet and touch base with hospital workers 
who were exhausted because the pandemic had taken a toll on their well-being, but continued to go to work to keep people healthy. I heard from small businesses trying to balance keeping their employees safe while keeping their businesses afloat. And I know people who have lost multiple family members to this horrible virus. Everyone in our state deserves to feel whole again. That's why the American Rescue Plan is so important. With $1,400 checks in people's pockets and extended unemployment benefits, New Mexicans will have immediate financial stability thanks to this bill. The bill also takes a long-term approach by investing $20 billion to establish a national COVID-19 vaccine program and $600 million to be directed to the Indian Health Service for vaccine-related activities so we can get more vaccines into people's arms and ensure teachers and students are safe to go back to school while jumpstarting an equitable recovery. I'm especially proud of the dollars included that will help local, state, and tribal governments keep communities running and provide services that we all rely on. I want to encourage everyone to continue living up to the values we hold as a community, giving compassion to our neighbors and caring enough to protect each other by wearing a mask and social distancing. We can get this, we can get through this together. U.S. Representative Deb Holland. And with that, I'll turn it over to Senator Heinrich and we look forward to the questions. And uh, I should note uh, the uh, Senator Lujan and I are gonna have to run to the floor because the, there is a vote currently happening for the nominee to run the EPA and it has already expired. So I think we can probably uh, get through one question with us here and then we'll uh, turn it over to the governor and the Congresswoman um, and we're gonna have to sprint for the floor. Absolutely, so just raise your hand um, for the attendees and I will unmute you shortly. I have Ryan Botel, I'm going to allow to talk. Ask your question, Ryan. Hi, members of Congress, Governor, thanks for taking the time to answer our questions. Um, I wanted to uh, get as much detail as I can about how much money is coming to New Mexico as part of the package. Yep. Um, I, I, I heard uh, $2.5 billion in local government relief, $1.2 billion in K-12 education, and $1 billion to New Mexico tribes. Um, can, can I get as much detail as possible on that? Thank you. Ryan, we'll follow up. We're, we're literally still pulling all of that together, um, but some of the, the bare minimum figures that we have at this point is 1.7 uh, billion to the state, um, 177 million to metro cities. Uh, we've got a long list and, and right now it, it looks it's incomplete, but we're looking at um, somewhere around $9 billion between state support, individuals, tribes, and all the other pieces here. So this is, um, this is and as we fill in those details, we'll try to get everyone a very detailed report. Okay, thank you. Um, any, any idea how much will have to be uh, distributed by the legislature? Uh, will, will they be involved in that? Uh, so, I mean, traditionally, the, when there's a federal investment, particularly these are dollars that are going to go directly to these uh, tribal nations uh, or sovereign nations and school districts uh, and communities and the state. Uh, in New Mexico, federal funds don't have to be reallocated or reappropriated by the legislature. Uh, however, so we don't have to call a special session uh, as an example, because our session ends in under two weeks, actually a week from this Saturday. Uh, but we do work very closely, right, with our elected leaders and our legislative uh, body to make sure that uh, as we are making appropriations right now, 
uh, in a number of areas for the state. We've got $900 million in economic relief to New Mexico businesses that we are allocating and aligning these both in the intent that it was uh, specified uh, by Congress uh, and the Biden administration, but also in a way that really leverages and maximizes these investments. So I hope that answers. It doesn't require legislative uh, approval or support, but I hope that you write uh, that without my legislature, uh, we'd be a long way away from adequately supporting New Mexico families and businesses. And I'm grateful for their leadership as well. Governor, I apologize. I'm gonna to have to run for the floor uh, before they close out this vote. And uh, I will turn it over to you and the Congresswoman. All right, thank you, Senators. Thank you for your leadership. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you, Senators. And thank you for the great votes you're making. With regards to that last question, I'd also point out that one of the things that we'll be doing through my office is uh, doing things like holding seminars to help the small business understand what is different about the PPP loans, uh, grants that are coming out now than before. So, you know, some of this is gonna flow through the state and then some of them are gonna flow through, you know, the PPP grants or USDA. There's gonna be different ways in which people will access these funds, including by filing those tax returns to get the childcare tax credit. That is really, we can't emphasize that enough because remember these, funds are gonna start flowing, the child tax credit is gonna start flowing on a monthly basis. And that's how we understand it's gonna make such a big difference. I love, I, I have been working on the child tax credit, you know, issues since before I got to Congress. I got together with Rosa DeLauro who first introduced this bill. Uh, 18 years ago, I think. So she has been on this. She has been trying to get this done because we've talked about the big difference it makes in New Mexico. The other thing it does is it helps our children develop in a way that we need them to develop so that those of our children who happen to be born into poverty or into families of lesser means, that they are able to develop at the same rate as all of our children. And the studies have shown that this kind of assistance makes a big difference. And you know, in New Mexico, we are really caring about our early childhood education. This is one of the layers that will help with that. So all of our children uh, uh, succeed and thrive because we believe, uh, we believe in our children, we invest in what we believe in, and we've invested in our children today. Thank you, Ryan. I am now going to open to Sean Griswold. You're now allowed to speak, Sean. Hello, thanks for taking my question today. Um, this actually, this question is for the governor. I wanted to get your thoughts, and if you have a figure as to what the um, Broad, this is related to broadband infrastructure and development. Uh, your thoughts on uh, the federal government's uh, emphasis to support broadband development in New Mexico, and if you happen to have a figure as to how much money uh, federal dollars could potentially come to New Mexico to help with the broadband plan. Well, uh, we do, um, and uh, and I'm not going to be as specific, frankly, uh, as you would like or deserve, as we're trying to figure out just exactly uh, where we can re-leverage uh, dollars in uh, the rescue plan benefit that comes to the state. But uh, I believe that for New Mexico to uh, be fully connected uh, and also then to create sort of regional expansion powers, much like the Utah program, uh, their regional uh, broadband initiative so that emerging businesses, faster speeds, better coverage, that, that yeah, that's an ongoing effort. Uh, we think it's about a $2 billion total price tag. I should come out of the legislative session with about uh, $140 million in direct broadband. We've got about $400 million that's made its way to the schools so far that I think we can leverage. Uh, we've got um, several hundred million out of the rescue plan. I should be able to round out the first year of both planning creating a broadband council, having a broadband division in state government, creating regional. For now, I'm gonna call them broadband cooperatives that have a lot of influence, uh, much like chambers do, to really create the kind of connectivity 
that businesses and higher ed needs uh, that uh, we think we'll be spending. So education, higher ed, direct money available to the state and that 1.7 billion and state investments. We're gonna get close to a billion dollars available in the first year. And then we're gonna keep building towards that second billion. And I think part of that may come, I'm, I don't wanna be overly optimistic. Oh, heck, why not? And with this kind of leadership in Congress and with the Biden administration, that in the infrastructure, uh, 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 efforts that I think are coming, uh, we're going to be able to close then the remainder of that gap. And again, this is not something that be so piecemeal or incremental. Uh, you never get it done. And it's you spend far more than you would have. So this billion dollars or close to it as we scrub the numbers, yeah, frankly, is a game changer in New Mexico's economy, given how rural and frontier, right, the, uh, the aspects of our communities are. This is an incredible benefit. I feel like the state has a real uh, chance and we could always compete even without broadband for every other state in the nation, but we shouldn't have to work so hard. This really creates a level playing field and it delivers healthcare and education uh, and it takes families out of poverty. Uh, it, is, it creates equity and equality. And uh, I'm really, really uh, excited about this billion dollars that I think we can put together readily out of the rescue plan and state general fund. So since the governor has asked, uh, tomorrow I am co-sponsoring and co-leading a rural <laughs> broadband bill that will be dropped. Rip Clyburn is the lead on the bill. He invited me to join his rural broadband task force. Uh, it is a great bill because it also understands that you need to have connectivity in the rural areas because if you don't, then those rural areas are left out of our economy, they're left out of our culture, There's our children uh, are, are suffering, right? We all heard about the buses who dropped off the paper, you know, sheaves of paper uh, because the children could not go to school uh, through the uh, through Zooms. Uh, so that will change. Uh, and that is a priority. That's a priority uh, here in Congress. Uh, we've heard it's a priority of the president. And so we are pretty confident that that bill will go somewhere and that there will be additional funding specifically for broadband. I have specifically requested to make sure that we include in the bill which is now in there, that we can allow for partnerships, that we can allow for collaboration, and that we make sure that we do not put provisions on there that are too expensive for some of our small rural communities to meet. We need to say, we need to get that the broadband out there, and it can't be only E-rate where the broadband stops at the library. We need to make sure that we fund to the last mile. That is what we're requesting, and that bill will be dropped tomorrow. We'll make sure you get a, a copy of our press release. I actually, uh, we, we are also voting. Uh, we have, uh, we're voting on, uh, uh, in I have four I have three minutes and then I have to leave <laughs> so we can take one more question right. and well, then we'll, we'll probably I... have to end oh sure then uh Matthew can you help us get the last question if you guys can be uh succinct uh and we'll get the congresswoman on her way do you do you, really, do you have time for one more or do you have to go congresswoman I have time for one more I'm going to open it, uh, the floor to uh, Julia Goldberg. You're unmuted. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Governor. Uh, hi, Congresswoman. I, uh, I didn't, I wondered if you could just repeat, I wasn't clear on the connection or what happens now in terms of vaccine supply to the state as a result of the bill. It sounded as though it was connected, but um, it went by kind of quickly. So what will, what will the impact be? And Julia, I'll take a stab at this. I mean, it's it's really twofold. Uh, I think the Biden administration, given uh, uh, they need appropriations, and so do we, for uh, uh, vaccine distribution uh, and supply. You know, they have uh, been increasing. Although we're going to have kind of a, I'm going to call it a plateau, not a decrease in the Johnson and Johnson uh, vaccine. But I think their commitment is to utilize these resources and bolster the amount of vaccines, uh, particularly the J&J &J vaccine. Um, uh, and I don't know what percentage they're gonna be able to allocate 
uh, each week, but we're also working with them on a couple of pilots that would give us access to a few more vaccines. So it's hard to quantify right now, but it is a clear recognition uh, that we didn't have those resources readily available. And just in the distribution issues, the 100% Medicaid match that's now in the rescue plan for vaccines uh, that are paid for from the Medicaid program and also the investments directly in public health, uh, we are, there was no way to sustain how we were paying for vaccine distribution uh, without the rescue plan. So I think it's largely distribution, but it also creates finance uh, funding vehicles. And I'll try to drill that down. Uh, Congresswoman, if you haven't gotten to know Julia, uh, she will ask you to drill down and you'll be grateful for it because uh, it gives you the right kind of absolute confidence about the decisions you're making that are evidenced and uh, numbers-based. And I, I mean that sincerely, uh, Julia. I appreciate how you do that. I'll drill down and see if I can't tie it to how much money they think they're going to be allocating directly to the manufacturer because a lot of that is also having a, the right supplies, right? Continuing to purchase and to use the Defense Production Act for syringes, uh, and containers, et cetera. And I'll try to drill down a little bit more. I haven't done all of that assessment uh, quite yet. So we did include specific money for all aspects of vaccine. The, what I don't know, we can give you what the, what the actually total amounts are in the bill. Uh, I can't tell you how much of that makes it to New Mexico, but since New Mexico is, we get the vaccine, we put it in people's arms, you know, it'll go there, but it includes everything. So it includes money for the Indian Health Service because we need to make sure that that they continue their great job of getting the vaccine out, $600 million to the Indian Health Service, specifically related to vaccine, $5.2 billion to support research development, manufacturing and production, the purchase of vaccines, um, you know, a billion dollars to the CDC to undertake awareness, um, you know, and so on and on. We can get that to you, Julia, in terms of the numbers. What I also love is that the bill, uh, this was something we did in House uh, Education and Labor, where I sit, uh, where we spent 14 hours marking up this bill that is looking at the bill and deciding what provisions would stay in and what, what, what we were going to fund. We made sure that there was money for awareness, including awareness to some of the populations that might normally not uh, have it. We know that we need to have awareness for our elderly, uh, for some of the underrepresented uh, populations. So that, you know, it includes everything for manufacturing, production, education. And thank you, Julia. I have had uh, the benefit of interacting with Julia over the Great. last two years and appreciate it. My uh, gratitude to all of you for, for uh, asking us questions, for coming here today. My gratitude to the governor and to the senators uh, for putting this all together. I think it's really important that New Mexicans hear as much as they can about what we're doing here, because the more they hear about what we're doing, the more they will take advantage of the money that we have uh, set aside and are sending you know, out once the president signs this, which will be soon, that money is gonna start flowing and we wanna make sure New Mexicans have access to it. They learn about all the different facets. I encourage you if anybody is looking, uh, you know, I, I'm telling everybody, go to my website, put your questions in there, reach out to us. We are gonna be asking New Mexicans to reach out to us if they have any questions. We're gonna be doing uh, education around some of the aspects of these bills. So we uh, hope to be talking to New Mexicans a lot over the next few months. Everyone for joining today's event. Uh, thanks to uh, Congresswoman Ledger Fernandez and um, Governor Luhan Grisham, as well as to Senators Heinrich and Luhan. Um, we will uh, be sharing a recording with you uh, in the next couple of hours. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>